Welcome to Real Money Talks, how to make money, manage money, and invest money. Your Real Money Talks host, Laurel Langmire, gets straight to the point about what it actually takes to make money and build lasting wealth in today's changing economic climate. If you're ready to get the financial results you've always dreamed of, keep listening. Real Money Talks is the right place for you. And now here's your host, Laurel Langmire. Hi, this is Laurel, and you're at Laurel's Real Money Talks, where we're talking about making money, keeping money, and investing money, and we do it off Wall Street. So what that means is if you invest in a stock, let's just call it Starbucks, Apple, Coke, whatever, IBM, and there is a problem at the operational level. You are a stockholder, and you have nothing to do about it besides reduce your stock and lose your money. Off Wall Street gives you control. It's at the street level, which means, I'll just give you an example. We're going to go buy a marina right now. 500 boat slips. We make 3,500 per year per boat slip. Um, We have an expert in boats and construction and docks and rentals and convenience stores. So we bring a team together. Then the team brings in investments, which is your dollars, that can invest differently. Now you own a company that is controlled by real people with real names, real addresses, Not that the Coke executives and the Apple executives don't have them, but you don't know them. I want you to invest off Wall Street. And I have the newest kit on the block today. It's called Cannabis. And it has been around, we are actually seven years into this industry. So we're a little late to the party. But I am in the party. And we have uh, extraordinary opportunities and offerings and just teaching you about how this extraordinary asset class is going to be a multi-billion dollar industry. So just like the gold rush in the 1800s, you could sat on the sideline and stayed in Kansas or you could have went west. So uh, we have with us an extraordinary webinar. It's a collective of five, almost five hours. and It'll be broken up to a variety of podcasts. So this will be a series of five podcasts out of each webinar. So get ready, get a pad and paper, And if you want to learn about the greatest new industry, and even if you don't want to learn about the product, I don't do the product. I don't know. I don't even like know hardly anything about the product. I know the industry and being part of a new industry growing in the world is an extraordinary opportunity. So take it, learn about it and enjoy the series. I want to welcome everybody again. Thank you for coming. This is uh, our Ask Laurel that we do every month. Uh, This month, we want to do a special feature featuring cannabis, and we're going to do these every single week for the next four weeks. We've had such excitement with this. We have nearly 1,000 people registered for this event today, and we expect that number to grow over the next few weeks because this has generated so much excitement. There's so many questions about this, and we've got some experts with us on the phone. Of course, we have Jennifer Murray with us. If you were with us for the Wealth Blitz, uh, that we had in July. She was uh, part of that. And of course, we're going to have Laurel Langmire with us. And in fact, I want to go ahead and turn the time over to Laurel to kind of set the stage for this. That's why you guys are here, not to listen to me, but to listen to Laurel, to listen to Jennifer. So I'm going to turn the time over to Laurel Langmire. Go ahead, Laurel. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. And thanks, Thomas and the team for putting this all together. And uh, it's exciting. So this uh, this is our month to uh, ask Laurel. And we are, like uh, Brian said, going into a four part. Now, a couple of fun new things. So if you know a bunch of your friends out there that wanted to uh, join and said, well, I'll just listen to the recording. Well, that isn't going to happen. So we're going to be uh, uh, not doing replays on this. We are recording it and we're going to be building it into an awesome product. We have uh, extraordinary uh, expert Jennifer Murray, who's with me today, um, and Stephanie Alper, who also will be with us, but she's out at a uh, a grow and doing some consulting uh, on this one. And we're going to might be bringing another guest. Part of what we're creating with you, um, you know, our whole conversation off Wall Street assets, you see that on the slides. Off Wall Street assets is everything from the, the regular, normal, you know, assets that everyone looks at, which is the stock market, which we don't like, uh, real estate, gas and oil, like in the field, franchises, owning companies, your local laundromat, your dry cleaner, your parking, like anything off Wall Street that you buy in your community that you own. And cannabis is a uh, I say a new kid on the block to this community, but not to 
uh, not to Jennifer, she's been around for seven years, she's part of our community, brilliant, her father's brilliant, and uh, is uh, really taking the lead in this conversation in our community, has been out to the table into our Off Wall Street workshops, um, and just, you know, continues to share her knowledge, and uh, it's a cool new asset class, and many people, there's a lot of moving parts to it, so um, with, without further ado, well, actually, I'm just going to frame a little more. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing four weeks. And then the co-creating part is we're going to be asking you at the end what specifically are areas you want to, you know, cover or know more about. Some of you might want to just invest in the asset class. Some of you might just want royalties as a way of investing. Some of you might, might want a career change and be part of it. Um, some of you already are in it. You might then privately growing in that little black market part of the world that's all over. Um, so there's just a lot of unknowns. So with that, um, I want to bring uh, Jennifer Murray. She's CEO and co-founder of Elevate Cannabis. And um, welcome. Welcome back. Well, well, thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. And of course, I love talking about cannabis. So it's all good. So do you want me to go ahead and start then? Yeah, let's go through with like your industry background. I know we have a whole slide because it's quite quite lengthy. Um, I think you know when you first came to the table in our community, our community, I mean it was like the new 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 kid on the block. April 2010 is when you founded Can Labs in Colorado. So kind of talk through that background just so folks know. You know you've been you've been through it all. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I founded one of the first cannabis analytical testing labs that tested for dosage and health and safety. There was no such thing around. In fact, myself and my employees had to get a red card or a medical marijuana card uh, to make sure that we were abiding by the law and didn't get arrested because there was no such thing as a laboratory or laboratory license back then. I also sat on the governor's task force in Colorado helping implement um, Amendment 64, which ended prohibition. And that same time, I was uh, invited to be on the, um, to be partake in the Washington State Liquor Board Testing Summit in Washington State to help implement testing rules. I was also a founding member of Women Grow, and um, I'm currently a board member of Flowering Hope, which is a nonprofit to help get um, medicine to people that can't afford it. Uh, the organization has helped over 1,500 people and continues to do so. I have spoke across the country, Canada, and I spoke at the World Cannabis Conference in Spain, in Barcelona. Um, I don't like to use the word expert because um, this industry is so new and in an infancy stage that I rather see myself as the champion of health and safety and look out for the patient. Um, it's, most people don't know the history of cannabis, and I'd like to say that cannabis has been always been known as a medicine until the 1930s. Since 2900 BC, the Chinese used it, and uh, it was for more than 100 ailments. Then um, in the 1600s, 1700s, marijuana came to North, or North America, and then, of course, um, a lot of people do know that George Washington did grow hemp. Um, and marijuana became mainstream in 1840, and actually in 1850 was added to the U.S. Pharmacopeia, which was a big deal. Um, and then following that, a few, uh, several years later, an article uh, in the leading medical journal, of course, uh, was using cannabis as an exit drug, as I call it, which is uh, interesting now as we have such a opioid epidemic going on, cannabis can really help with that. And unfortunately, people think it's a, um, it's a, uh, uh, a drug that gets you into other drugs. Um, absolutely false. So what happened? Well, in the 1930s, propaganda began all over money. Um, a, a gentleman named Randolph Hearst owned a ton of newspapers and magazines and new hemp was on the forefront, and hemp is a far superior material than, of course, plastics and paper. So they had to figure out a strategy in order to keep people away from cannabis or hemp. And Harry Anslinger, at the same time, um, they were ending alcohol prohibition, and he had all these employees and didn't know what he was going to do with them. So they both um, contributed to a bunch of racism and propaganda against marijuana. 
And of course, DuPont and pharmaceuticals joined in, of course, because uh, they, stand, they stood to gain a lot without people knowing about how amazing the cannabis plant really is and how medicinal it is. Uh, the two stooges I like to call, the quotes um, are just unbelievable. And I encourage you to Google uh, marijuana propaganda just to, to hear what some of, um, some of our politicians and other important people in history have said. But um, one of them was users of marijuana become stimulated as they inhale the drug and are likely to do anything. Most crimes of violence in this section, especially in county districts, are laid to users of that drug, speaking of marijuana, of course. And if you've never um, had marijuana, um, you wouldn't understand this, but marijuana is the last drug to make you aggressive and upset. Um, and then Harry Anslinger, there are hundreds, hundred of thousand total marijuana smokers in the U.S., and most are Negroes, Hispanics, Filipinos, and entertainers. Their satanic music, jazz, and swing result from marijuana usage. This, this marijuana causes white women to seek sexual relations with Negroes, entertainers, and others. And these are just a few. I mean, it's, it's absolutely astonishing. And every time I read it, it just makes my skin crawl. So that started Reefer Madness. And then, of course, Reefer Madness came out. The devil's lettuce. That if you, um, you know, consumed cannabis that you would turn into a violent person and want to kill people or have orgies, which of course is ridiculous. Um, after 40 years, uh, we've spent a trillion dollars and hundreds and thousands of lives on the drug war. And I just can't even imagine if we spent a million dollars or a trillion dollars on cannabis research, I'm pretty sure we'd have a lot of cures by now. Um, and Richard Nixon quoted, I want a goddamn strong statement on marijuana. I mean, one that just tears the ass out of them. You know, it's a funny thing. Every one of the bastards are out for legal, legalizing marijuana is Jewish. Um, to think that people actually believe this is just astonishing to me. But that's what, um, how powerful marketing is. So how did I get involved? I was... Sorry. Yeah, really quick. Because, yeah, I just want to... Uh -huh. Are there any like shocking questions? Because I know the first time that I heard you talk about this and just, you know, uh, just so you know, all of you that are out there listening, I mean, Jen's ultimate goal is to end prohibition of this, you know, of, of cannabis. So um, it, I love what you did, the history of this. I'm just curious, Brian, are there any reactions or comments in the chat room uh, that people want to get involved with? Um, I mean, the U.S., has been running this for a very long time. And, you know, there's going to be an interesting concern. And Jen, I want you to talk a little bit about this as we get further in is, you know, the farmers are pretty much, you know, run by a lot of stuff and they're going to, you know, they're already getting very involved in this because um, they, you know, have had people sick and get, get well. Um, it's going to be an interesting run. Brian, is there any questions? Yeah, we do. We've got a, we've got a question that, I, that I'd love your take on. This says, how would this square with the new AG and his war on drugs? So um, our governor, well, first of all, our state ran a bill that said if the um, new register or the new leadership and which state, Jennifer, uh, shut down Colorado. Sorry, okay. no, um, that, that if, sure it, <laughs> right? I I just assumed. Um, but anyway, we ran a bill that said if if they do in fact get rid of recreational marijuana, that our state would immediately go back to medical marijuana, but. Sessions has said several times that he is absolutely not interested in busting the legal states that have got rid of most of the black market. Um, so that includes, you know, Washington, Oregon, Colorado, all the states that are heavily regulated. He's really talking about the cartels and everything in California. Um, it's a big problem, a big problem state. It's the Wild West. And even though they were one of the first they really have not um, put it together. So this year, since it's passed legally, they are putting rules and regulations together, but I just don't see how they're gonna finish them. I mean, Colorado had a well-established medical program that had been around since 2010, and it took us a solid year to implement recreational. So how much bigger is California than Colorado? A lot. I just don't see them getting, getting all the regs ready in a year. But um, yes, 
Uh, I do not think, I think that there's no way, in my opinion, they can get rid of medical marijuana. And after California goes legal, I just don't see this going backwards. But I mean, if we look at the current state now, they have a lot more to worry about than uh, cannabis. And I bet you money, a lot of them already have money into cannabis. So um, I, I'm not worried about it. And I guess if I was, I would have never been in it seven years ago because seven years ago, I was afraid I was going to get arrested. So it's definitely gotcha. come far and, I, and I'm not too worried about it. But great gotcha. question. It is. It's, it's, it's good. It's, it's something a lot of people are thinking about and talking about. Um, I, I got a text from somebody that we're working with that, that said they, they love the idea of this. They love the idea of the business of it, the money of it, the, uh, the aspect that it can really help people. But their real concern is the legal side of things. You know, what do, yeah. you, how do, you, do you address it the same way? You know, um, and it's different now than it was. Uh, by leaps and bounds. I was scared. I didn't tell anyone for about six months, but what you have to understand is you're either in or you're out. Um, you're you're going to have a really hard time um, getting things done if you know, you're doing it on the down low. Now, people are, but I think the more people come out and the more this plant is accepted, uh, the faster things will change and the faster we can end prohibition. And there's and people should not be ashamed um, of this plant. I mean, people go home and have a glass of wine. Some people go home and consume cannabis. Big deal. And cannabis can't kill you. And it actually is medicinal. So. <laughs> got it. Hey, Laurel, I've got a question for you, actually. Laurel, I've got to, I want to get your take on this. Um, what do you say to people who come to you and say, you know, I, I want to be in this, but I'm in a non-legal state. Can I still participate? What can I do? Um, well, from an investing standpoint, yes, because it's going to, it uh, would be accredited investors into, uh, just because like most of the off Wall Street assets are for accredited investors. And again, accredited investors are people, uh, individuals who make 200000 or more for the last two years, or a couple that makes 300000 or worth a uh, net worth of a million. So as most of the folks know in our community, you know, getting you accredited is faster and easier just to, you know, increase your business, whatever your cash machine business is, and to get the, the 200 plus, you know, in income to get accredited. Um, so you can, uh, it's just like any other PPM effect, you know, that it's uh, blue sky filings, it's the same. You know, it's the same cross border uh, inside the state, though, Jen, like uh, I think an investing is fine. But as, if it's not legal, it's not legal. I mean, you can probably speak to any of the states, even crossing. Um, I think you said like on a call yesterday. I mean, you can't even cross, uh, you know, state lines without having to be a federal offense. You want to speak to that a little bit, Jen? From an investing standpoint, I know you can do it because it's accredited and they're signing, you know, they're signing off accredited. And blue sky filings would be, you know, put into every state of the investor. But from a use and business, it is just really state by state and city by city, right, Jen? Uh, yes. First, I would suggest that if you're in a non-legal state, that you get involved. Um, it all starts with politics, legislators, senators, you standing at the Capitol, educating people. So I would encourage first that. Look at, um, you know, Marijuana Policy Project, National Cannabis Industry Association, um, you know, Students um, for Sensible Drug Policy on college campuses. So there's a lot you can do as far as, um, yeah, you cannot cross borders. Even if it's legal in two states, I can't cross over into Arizona and bring cannabis legally. Um, and every state's different. In Colorado, it, you could not be an out-of-state investor until January of this year. So it took them seven years to allow out-of-state investment here. Now, of course, Colorado is leader and we also were the pioneers and we also got kicked and slapped. And so mm -hmm. a lot of stuff may be over-regulated here. Um, but again, you need to find out what are the local, um, local investing rules in each of the uh, different states. Back to you and how you got involved. So Arizona, you said Arizona early oh. in 2010. Let's jump back to yeah. uh, yeah. how you got involved. So I was, I was visiting my father, and um, I was at a friend of a friend's restaurant, and we were chatting, and 
uh, this gentleman found out I had a degree in science and he kind of perked up and I thought that was weird. And I said, um, well, what? And he was like, well, you know, what do you think about testing cannabis? And I put my hand up like I was smoking a joint and said, testing cannabis, testing marijuana, what does that mean? And he said, no, like pharmaceuticals test for active ingredients. And a light bulb went on and it changed my life forever. And uh, that's when I started Can Labs and um, built it up, you know, grassroots style. Uh, the reason um, cannabis is progressing so fast is science, flat out, um, and Sanjay Gupta making a public apology. Um, Sanjay Gupta's senior producer, I was the first person they called um, and asked, said they were doing a documentary about uh, cannabis and wanted to know the real story. And I didn't believe her. I said, sure you are. And she goes, no, really, I am. And so I looked her up and she was the senior producer. And Sanjay Gupta, that's a picture of Sanjay and I, uh, God, a while ago, 2013. Um, and I was in the documentary, but I got cut out because I introduced them to the children, um, Charlotte Figgy, who was close to death, um, having 150 grand mal seizures a day uh, with cannabis oil. I believe um, it was a uh, one every couple months. It was that drastic. And so um, Sanjay Gupta has done three documentaries. I encourage you to look them up. It's called Weed, Weeds, and Weed 3. And um, it shows you a lot of parents going through big problems with children that cannabis is absolutely helping. Now, the United States is not allowed for, um, um, for researching because it is a Schedule One drug. So uh, this was a big step. Now, the, in the, the cannabis economic impact is unbelievable. I mean, by 2020, and it's a big range, but I believe that probably will be over $44 billion. And there are, there are plenty of opportunities, uh, whichever way you go, whether you want to just join the industry or whether you really want to have a business. Um, current cannabis opportunities break down into two things, touching the plant, so cultivating retail, um, extracting the plant for edibles, testing transportation, formulation, R&D, and all of that, and then not touching the plants, which include, you know, uh, marketing, sales, attorney, software, anything, any skill sets you bring, you can bring to this industry. And even if you want to uh, make a career change, you can always enter the industry with your skill set, network, meet some people, and then change your, change your skill set. So there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, and Jen... I want to just touch on that because I think that's what a lot of, you know, the majority of folks like that are on the call or live out loud and right. We talk about all these different opportunities, and in here I think the one that's still like the real estate. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you can speak to some of the horror stories, but some, you know, that you know, like locally, it's going on even in Tahoe is that you really need to own and buy. Like you need to own the land, own the real estate. The, the properties, um, maybe you have some horror stories, but some that we've heard is, you know, landlords, once they find out that you actually um, have medicinal marijuana, they're either extorting them, uh, trying to get a part of their license. Um, you know, I've known, you know, several now that are shut down in the Northern California and the Northern Nevada areas. I mean, you want to speak to some of the, some of the, the, the tougher ones in here. The other one I would add to this also would be just security. I mean, security is a, uh, a, a massive opportunity for folks. You know, I've talked to some folks that are policemen and they said, well, when we, couldn't we do security for cannabis uh, projects? And I said, absolutely. I think there's huge needs in every area. There's actually a public company that includes a security uh, company. And yes, security is extremely important since we do not have traditional banking and we have a 280 tax problem. So um, it is very dangerous. I've had a... Um, or was very dangerous before security. I had a friend of mine who got $30,000 stolen out of her car with a, uh, a, you know, broke the window and thank God they did that instead of following her home. So there are still those problems. Um, and real estate. So yeah, um, the second you tell anyone you're in marijuana, they raise the price. Um, some people do for liability, others do because they think everybody's making you know, a million dollars. So 
Um, I would not recommend having a, an operation unless you are partnered with the landlord or that you absolutely own uh, the real estate. It's just, I've seen people in Colorado invest millions into a grow and indeed have the, uh, um, have the landlord be able to uh, kick them out. So real estate, very important. Good, good point, Laurel. On that line, Jennifer, how would you say real estate, how's the market in Colorado real estate wise fared since the legalization? Just overall. So it's a, oh, well, anyone that has been in Colorado and drive, drove down I-70, I mean, most of the uh, warehouses and things were abandoned. I mean, it has, it has flourished. Denver is now the most expensive city, uh, not on a coast. I mean, it, it's $2,000 for a studio in Denver. So um, anyway, so yes, it's thriving. Now, seven years ago, you had to beg, I mean, beg for somebody to allow you to grow. And a lot of um, operations here were uh, people that owned um, real estate. They kept having people come to them and say, hey, can we lease this to grow marijuana? And they said, well, why would we do that? We'll just grow marijuana ourselves. So um, Colorado is a different story. Um, you know, when, when people started, you could start grassroots. You could start with two grow lights. Now you can't. You have to, you know, uh, especially if you're touching the plant, you're cultivating. It's, it's several million dollars. So Colorado was great that we got in on the ground floor, but also very hard because we had to, to um, take all the hits. And what I mean by that is, you know, in an, a, an edible company could spend ten tens of thousands of dollars on labels. And then, um, you know, the legislator comes back and says, and eh, we want to add this. And then, you know, it doesn't matter. You have to throw all those out. So now the, now the states that are coming on board now, they've worked a lot of that out. So it's a lot better than it used to be. But again, it's still an infancy stage. Okay. So you'd still consider it, you know, when you're talking like business stuff, business loans, bank loans, that can still be a little more difficult to obtain those? There, there is no traditional loan now. Okay. You're, you're talking hard money loans, venture capital funds, um, stuff like that. But no, you can't go to your bank. And, and just to clarify, it's not illegal for us to bank or people that touch the flower or anybody in marijuana bank. It's just that the bank um, makes money on loans and other services, not checking um, and savings. So they choose not to take on cannabis because, um, or they will charge you a large monthly fee to cover all the paperwork that they have to do to prove that you're not a black market um, operation. Okay, perfect. Hey, Thomas, for my end, will you go back a slide? We have some people wanting to see the touching the plant. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, if you wouldn't mind, Cover the touching the plant part a little bit more in detail as far as the cannabis opportunities. We've got some people who the slide went by pretty quickly. If you could kind of yeah. go over go over these a little bit more in detail. Sure. So cultivating or farming, um, you have indoor, outdoor, greenhouse, um, retail, of course, or collectives, dispensaries, um, extraction concentrates. That's where you take the cannabis flower, the cannabis plant, and you put it in an extraction machine or you put it in your crock pot um, and you extract out the trichomes or where all the cannabinoids are, such as THC and CBD. Um, and then people use those extractions either to sell um, for consumption, smoking, or to make an edible. Uh, edibles are baked goods, candy, I mean, you name it, cannabis has been uh, mixed in it or um, infused with it. I had a gentleman that brought me uh, a beef stick that he had made, which I thought was very weird. But since Colorado has um, made a rule that you cannot mix um, meat with cannabis, nor can you mix it with alcohol or tobacco and sell anything like that. Of course, you can do it at home, but um, they just felt that that wasn't good. Then testing, which is what I did. Um, testing is way more advanced now, and they they um, it's it's very important. I mean, why would you put something in your body that wasn't tested? Unfortunately, I think uh, the majority of people think it's tested. They just assume, just like people all these years have assumed that supplements were tested, but they weren't until I think two years ago. Uh, transportation, so getting the product to the endpoint. Um, just to kind of talk about that in the early days, 
uh, Colorado, you had to manifest, which meant you had to, you know, send in a manifest exactly which route you were taking. It had to be to the place in 24 hours. Well, and one to one. So you couldn't, you couldn't take several things and transport them. You could only take this flower to this dispensary. Well, imagine taking that flower or edible from Denver to Durango in a snowstorm. So finally, um, uh, Colorado is setting up distribution facilities, which is exactly what they needed to do. Unfortunately, it took a long time, but that's okay. Product formulation. So most people that started early on started in, of course, their kitchen or their basement or whatever. Um, now you have to have commercial kitchens that are licensed and everything else. Um, but now we have, of course, scientists that uh, that do food and everything else entering in the cannabis um, industry that do formulation. Um, and r and I'm going to go into a little bit later on some of the other slides. But that's, main, that's mainly touching Excellent. the plant. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Um, I wanted to go ahead. I want to do a poll question. Uh, you know, we try to do three or four different poll questions in, in the webinars to try to get as much, uh, you know, feedback from everybody else as we can. Our first question that we have, we'll post on the screen here, and we'd love to get feedback from everybody, is are you interested in starting a cannabis business? Yes or no? And again, just, just put in there, and that, now a cannabis business, um, you've listened to what she's been talking about so far, and Laurel's been talking about so far, does it, does it interest you? Do you want to start a cannabis business? So put that in there, yes or no, we'll give everybody a few minutes, or not a few minutes, we'll give everybody 30 seconds or so to respond, and we'll move on. Just think of all the new startups, Jen, now the consulting. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's okay. another thing. How to how to find a good consultant? Because <laughs> there's a lot of people just kind of well, they're they're voting. Um, there's a lot of people who say, I mean, you you kind of speak to this. I don't know that it's in a slide, but <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of people who say they know a lot about it. They may know the product, but they don't know the business. And a lot of uh, <clears throat> which you know, I I'd hate to use the word fraud, but there's a lot of misleading. Uh, and misled people in, in this industry, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. I mean, you always have uh, uh, the people that, you know, every industry has those snakes, but I think that with brand new industries, there's a lot of, um, you know, scams going on, and especially with something like this that was in the black market. Also, um, you know, you'll meet everybody's a master grower. Oh, I've been growing for 40 years. Well, great. 40 years ago, you had no, uh, none of the um, things to grow with like you have now. I mean, the advance in light, soil, greenhouses, everything. So that's great that you know the cannabis plant and you could grow it. Um, but then you have the growers that, you know, grew a plant or two in their basement and now they think they can grow 100,000 square feet of grow. Not going to happen. Okay. So you really have to be careful and, and vet people. And that's just growing. I mean, then you talk about consultants, you know, they... Uh, there are so many consultants that have no idea what they're doing, and then these operations are having to pay for another consultant to clean up. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just like anything else, due diligence. All right, perfect. Thank you. We closed the poll on that. We had about 64% uh, voted, which is great turnout. 72% said yes, they uh, are interested in starting a cannabis business. So that's, that's excellent. So thank you. And, uh, Hopefully there are women. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. And Jennifer, keep going. Okay, so I did talk a little bit about extractions and concentrates. Um, there's basically uh, four main extractions, and that's CO2 or hydrocarbons, which are butane, propane. Um, in the early days, people would use naphtha, which is paint thinner and actually causes cancer. Um, so a lot has been learned. Um, you can extract cannabis with water or um, uh, alcohol. I talked about edibles, so they include baked goods, candy, soda, chocolate, and all of those. And then, of course, uh, medicinal deliveries would include transdermal patches, tinctures, um, nasal spray, inhalers. All of those are available with cannabis. So I, when I told you I'd talk about R&D, I have a big question for people that um, are on the fence um, and may not know this, but the U.S. has a 
why did they have a patent on cannabis if it's a Schedule One drug, which means no medicinal benefits alongside heroin? You can look it up. Uh, the slide you're seeing is my hand, um, a mother of an epileptic child started this Talk to the Hand campaign. It spread like wildfire. Um, and the good news is, is now you can apply to study the drug. Unfortunately, you're not going to probably get any money to do that, uh, especially government money, since we pay a ton of federal tax and we get no tax benefit, federal tax benefits. But um, this is a big question, and it was filed on 2001. So the U.S. definitely knows that it is medicinal. And Jim, Any I questions on that? that? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so it's interesting they filed this this recent. I think that's got to be just shocking for most people that you know they got way, you know, in front of it. Um, do you think they're actually going to change the Schedule One drug? Are you seeing any of that? You know what? It, I thought they were going to do it, and then I didn't know if they're going to do it, and then it depends on if they reschedule it to two or three. I think it should be descheduled. I mean, alcohol is not scheduled, tobacco is not scheduled, and both of those things kill you. Cannabis has never killed a person. So I think it should be descheduled, um, but rules will apply. I uh, the good news is, is the American Medical Association just entered in a, um, uh, a, I don't know if it's called a ruling, but a paper that said that absolutely cannabis helps epilepsy. So I think that they're going to be forced to do something. And I think um, that's going to come from uh, the thousands of parents across the country that have six, ch six children that have had to uproot their family to Colorado and some other places. Literally, I've seen family after family have to separate where, you know, the, the whoever works in the family has to stay in, let's say, you know, um, uh, Tennessee, and then the, the mother comes with the child to, to Colorado. I mean, it's, it's awful. It's, it's crazy. And then uh, speak a little bit also just because I think, I mean, Colorado, you said, uh, I believe you said, I think I got what, half a billion dollars in tax and taxes from this industry. I mean, the taxation of this right now, there's really not a lot of uh, benefits because of the 280 rule, but don't you think that's actually going to be changing? I mean, the government will make a fortune on this asset. The government's already making a fortune without giving any benefits. So we thought this would be changed a long time ago. And, you know, of course, I lobby every year. Um, and um, it's amazing how many people want to talk to us now when they didn't want to, you know, when I started. And I think my first lobby was 2011. Um, things have to change, but when or how, uh, I don't know. Um, and you have to think about regulation. I mean, the FDA can barely regulate pharma. Of course, pharma is who um, pays into the FDA, which is completely a, a conflict of interest. But um, uh, I, I just don't know who's going to regulate it. And again, think about this plant, right? As a plant, it's agriculture. The second it changes forms, it's a drug or it's, it's under food. So um, it's going to be interesting if they have one regulator. Uh, well, they need one regulator, but it might be under two regulators. Who knows what they'll do with it? So, honestly, I don't know. Interesting. All right, well, let's keep going. Let's talk about education and training. I think that the, there's a massive opportunity for that. Yeah, so you can go and Google a whole bunch of things, and you're gonna you're going to see a whole bunch of opinions that have no... Um, science based or or anything like that a lot of false information and there's not a lot of higher education no pun intended but but um, they're they're beginning now and we're starting to see um, CME courses which are course credited for um, the medical um, industry which is great because a lot of doctors really want to get into this or at least know enough to refer a patient but are scared uh, they're scared about losing their license, which I understand that. Um, so education and training has come a long way. Now, my favorite topic, of course, women in cannabis. Um, 
Now, the last time I did this uh, at the big table, which was what, a month, month ago, um, the, yep. the number was 36% was, uh, of women. Um, the recent number is 27% of women. So what I think is they just had a, t a higher number and this is probably um, close, but it still doesn't matter. I mean, 20% of women are in leadership as compared to 6% in technology, really, or 9% in the Forbes 500. Um, this is amazing. And it makes sense, though, because women usually are making the medical decisions. They're more compassionate. Um, they're the fastest growing demographic using cannabis. And um, historically, they have not been marketed to. Um, more women are getting educated and are, are finding out where their dollars are spent. Are there women owners? Are there women on the board? Are there women executives making decisions? And if they're not, these companies aren't going to go as far. How are you going to market to a woman, woman if you don't have any women on your staff? It just doesn't even make sense. So I am thrilled about this. I think women should get very excited. This could be the first time in history where women control or run a billion trillion dollar industry. So I am recruiting women like mad. <laughs> Any questions on that? You know what? Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do. Let's let's do. Let's cover some stuff. We've got a let's put up another poll. I think this is a good time to transition into that. Thomas, if you want to put that one up. The the next one is are you looking to get into the industry for a career change? You know, because it does touch on that a little bit when you talk about women in the industry. Um, yeah. So the people that are on what are you looking to get into it for? Is it for a career change or something else? That's coming next, yeah, we've right? We've got the investment question <laughs> coming up. Yeah. We got this. Investment <laughs> got it. Well, got them down. One of the yeah. things that just is uh, looking at the investments, interesting, um, you know, looking at putting the PPM together is how many people who have, um, I'm just gonna, gonna speak to different jobs, whether it's chiros or doctors or they're in certain jobs where them having an equity position, like a shareholder stake inside of a cannabis business, would be uh, in their mind career limiting, but they want the cash flow. So, you know, the way that you know, we've been talking to, about how to even allow, like, just do an offering would be for equity, those who want equity, um, those who want, uh, like, just, and Jen, Jen and I haven't even talked about this, but just uh, this morning, someone has a big 1031. You know, and they wanted to just do the real estate side of it. So could they buy the real estate and do the build uh, and on that part? So it's going to be interesting to see how some of these projects get put together with the different kinds of money that are coming. And some of those like doc money, you know, they're just like, can I just get paid a royalty but not be a shareholder? So just, you know, that's stuff that we'll be talking about as we, you know, continue uh, the conversation the next four weeks and be putting some of those uh, projects together. So I think it's going to be creative. I don't know, Jen, if you want to speak to that, I know. You know, we're looking at one together right now, but any other, uh, what you've seen, I mean, you've been around for so long and how the investment side is put together. Yeah, and again, it just kind of depends on your, um, you know, your just like anything else, Laurel, your risk level, where, where do you want to put it in? Do you want to put it in companies that are touching the plant? or you know, ancillary companies? I mean, if we look at the cold mining days, who made the money? Levi's picks and shovels. So, um, you know, you want to keep that in mind. It just all depends on your skill set, your personality, and what you what you really want to get into. What are some of the the folks that actually get into the um, the infused products? Uh, what's some of the background or of some of those folks? So, there's people that have used it for a long time and now creating the different edibles and the different drinks and things like that. Like who, who are those kinds of people? They're usually past users or you know, people that so in the kitchen? No. <laughs> in fact, in fact, you know, um, the reason I think that edibles are picking up is one, less people smoke cigarettes. Um, the reason I've smoked cannabis is because I used to smoke cigarettes. I think that if I had never smoked cigarettes, I would never smoke cannabis, right? I would, I would try edibles. So I think that since hopefully smoking numbers are going down um you're gonna see hopefully we you know take out tobacco altogether in the next you know generation um so i think that um you know the people that smoke are used to it but also because it's instant gratification 
Now, after you have a surgery and, you know, the, the doctor gives you either ibuprofen or something heavier, remember, they, they make sure that they tell you to take it at certain times because if you miss, you're going to be in such pain and you're not going to be able to, you know, it's going to take a while to kick in. So, of course, smoking kicks right in. So people that have disease and are in pain, you know, want that instant gratification where edibles, um, now they're faster delivery, but before, I mean, it would take a half an hour to two hours um, for it to kick in. So I think as we evolve, but then if you look at certain states <laughs> don't allow edibles, certain states don't allow flour. Um, so again, it just depends on which state. So, um, but I think edibles, um, but edible is also a different drug. When you ingest an edible, it releases a chemical called 11-hydroxy, which makes you feel different than when you inhale. So it, it really, some people think uh, it should be categorized differently because it is definitely different than smoking. Hey, we just had a good question come up. The question came up that, uh, what do edibles do if you're not taking it for pain? Uh, euphoria. Um, it's a, it's a high, it's just more, um, well, again, we're all organic, so it's different for everybody, but you know, it's, it's, um, it's a euphoria in your body and it just, you know, creates, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like the feeling. Some people, some people do, some people prefer edibles because that feeling is different than smoking. Um, the one thing that you have to be careful about edibles is not go slow, uh, low and slow because you're committed, right? Um, now you can't <laughs> die, but it can make you feel really bad. I mean, to where you're, you can throw up. So it's very important to, to go slow, start with two and a half to five milligrams versus if you smoked a little too much, you know, you can wait like five to 10 minutes and, you know, that will subside a little bit more. So it all just depends. But yeah, it, it makes you euphoric and everything like that. Perfect. Hey, really Thomas. Exactly, yeah. Let's go ahead to the next well, question. The be, question comes out. Um, Do you want to? Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, what were the poll uh, numbers on that? What were the, the that last, last poll? The, the last poll came up at about 52 to 48, that they're looking for a career change. 52 wow. to hmm. say yes, which I thought, I didn't think it'd be that high. See? So. That's fine. I That's knew it. Yeah. Very good. So the next poll comes up is, do you want to invest in the cannabis industry? Because a lot of people want to change into it, not exactly sure what to do. Others want to invest in it. So this is where we kind of get a, want to get an idea here. So far, the numbers are about after 33% of the votes in, it's 99% yeses. So. So let me say something about career change. Uh, the new, the reason I knew that would be, be higher is. I feel like most people are complacent and they're just going through life on a hamster wheel. And I'll tell you what, you cannot do that in cannabis. I mean, you always have to be thinking, you always have to be on point. Um, and it's really, truly making a difference. So I think, um, I think that's a big reason. And, you know, right now you could be changing history is the bottom line. Well, I think too, Perfect. Jen, as we Thank look you. at what we're, well, you know, it's interesting, Jen, as we look at what we're doing, I mean, we could almost be like, you know, a little matchmaker for the people who need who who need help and, you know, a little recruiting matchmaking is part of what we're doing. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. it's it's extremely hard to navigate this industry. Yeah. Hey, See, Brian, Jennifer, what is off top of your head, what states are, what states are, is cannabis legal right now? Oh, my Lord. Um, it changes so quickly. Um, uh, let's see, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, uh, fully legal or medical. Which ones are you talking about? Uh, they would say fully legal. Fully legal. Okay. So Colorado, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, now California, Massachusetts. Um, I'm missing. Um, <laughs> I know Maine, Maine and Vermont actually uh, would have made history 
by making it um, legal by legislation, but they've had a hiccup or two. So I don't know where that's at right now. Um, but I think that co covers it. Okay. Maybe Hawaii. Perfect. The response changes so, so far, much. <laughs> oh, no, I, it's, it's great. That no, was a huge help. The responses so far are 94% yes. So we're getting a lot of comments right now that are coming in just about in investment opportunities. You know, they want to know, you know, we, we, we got into this call because we are very interested investment wise. Where do we go? What do we do next? Stay tuned. That's why we're here. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, yeah, that's why we're here. And we'll, uh, right now we're just putting um, some of those uh, PPM and those operating, uh, you know, agreements together. So stay tuned and stay on the call. So again, we are not gonna release the replay. I mean, if you had somebody, you know, that really needed to, to listen to it, we want people to show up and be on the call. We want to pull on the call. Um, so make sure you do block the next three Wednesdays, um, same time, and you'll be uh, sent out the call information. So stay, you know, very engaged in all of that. Uh, one thing, you know, Brian and Thomas, we may want to do is open just a, like Live Out Loud under our banner a private Facebook group you know for people to once we you know get further in um, just to continue the conversation I mean one of the things I want to go to the next slide is coming soon is just different um, and we love your feedback in the in the chat right now and in the next three weeks we want you to part we want you to co-create where do you want our conversation to go because it's so much and there's so many places um, we could talk about from the political side to um, just the investing side, the career change, uh, and how to really start moving into that. But here's some, you know, is all cannabis creating equal? What's the difference between the medical and recreational? Um, hemp versus marijuana, the whole black market, the politics in cannabis, like I said, um, how do you stay compliant, the most regulated industry in the country, uh, especially when it's not federal. I mean, one of the other things I'd like to put on here is Canada is going live next July, uh, recreational and medicinal across the entire country, and they're allowing exports that America's not even, I mean, they're going to be way ahead. Security, distribution, how that works. So I think those are some of the topics that uh, that we've talked about as a team in uh, the next three weeks. So those of you that have opinions or what you'd like us to focus on more, if you want to put those in, um, so we can actually continue to co-create and design the conversation you want, but also know that the things that we know you need to know about. Jen, anything else you want to add to that? Mm, no, I think those are the, the, uh, uh, the big ones. The most important thing, right, is getting feedback from, from people on what they want to learn. Of course, we want to, to give them the most value that we can. Yeah, exactly. So if we can get that, if we can get that feedback from everybody, it will be helpful to us. We can direct these. Again, we've had we have hundreds of people on this right now. So and they've tuned in and out of this. So it's it's just going to get bigger and bigger. So throw in your questions now. It helps us organize everything for the next few weeks, and we'll we'll know where to, to get the most interest. So anyway, do you want to head to the Ask World slide? Let's do a few questions, and then uh, we actually do have a uh, call to action to invite you not only the next three weeks but uh to something that's extraordinary and upcoming in october so is there any questions specifically for myself or jen right now yeah um canadian opportunities you touched on it a little bit but a, a lot of people have you know know they've brought it up in the in the question board that are from canada they just want to know what are some canadian opportunities right now that are that are available over the next little bit what would you prepare for um getting licenses uh do an application um there's a lot of what there's a lot of activity already that's been going on um called black market or you know under the radar in fact i'm meeting some tomorrow i'm up here and uh, i'm actually doing the call from calgary today and um was, i mean I, we've known people for months and months and months there's a lot of growth um jim what would you say I, I, it's a lot of it's get ready and then it will go but the applications i don't believe are coming out until the beginning of the year actually there's a few that are given right now so a, there's a whole application, and, and it's expensive to apply. It's a non-refundable application. Well, I think there's plenty of opportunity. Of course, Canada has different laws than we do, um, especially around edibles, I think. So to give an idea, in Canada right now, um, you there's no dispensary. There's no uh, retail. You get it from the, the grow, gets it tested, and mails it out to you. Um, however, Vancouver uh, wanted to do their own thing. So there are some dispensaries in Vancouver, and there's been a lot, a lot of um, 
a lot of uh, activity around all of that, but um, it, it just depends on what you want to do. If you want to touch the plants, yeah, you get in and um, you know, get in on the application. Of course, getting in to touch the plant is going to cost you more than, you know, um, things that don't touch the plant. But there are so many opportunities. If you're in Canada, I mean, if you like a product in Colorado, maybe you bring that product to Canada. So um, there's just a lot of different, different, different uh, ways to do this. So the next slide too, if you head down. So you know, what do you want to learn? Again, this is another slide to you know really do inquiry to you. You are interested again in uh, starting the, the business. You know, what do you want to learn? Um, the key takeaways are you know, cannabis equals an enormous opportunity. Um, like you said, it's going to be changing history. The uh, new gold rush, the 2000, you know, the gold rush of the 2000 era. Hey, Thomas, go back a slide. All right, perfect. Now, again, I just wanted to go back on this just to touch on it. We, we've got the, the question board is, is flooding right now with people wanting to know about a minimum investment opportunity. Uh, what's an entry level investment? What do people have to do uh, there? It's 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 going fast. It's it's pretty cool to watch. But uh, I mean, it's people it's people all, all across the boards. They're wanting to know, you know, what other opportunities this is going to create. I mean, it's 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 crazy. So anyway, if you're going to touch on that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the opportunities are going to be huge. I and mean, we are going to be bringing some uh, PPMs to the market with different opportunities people can invest in. Um, the one in Colorado, Jen's probably a good month, six, maybe even eight weeks out. Wouldn't you agree with that? It's going to take a little bit. Um, yeah, just uh, everything. The, the joke in cannabis is hurry up and wait so um that's pretty much it i mean you got to hurry up then you got to wait so just be prepared for that <laughs> yeah and i think the investment levels I mean, for the most part again it's an accredited invest uh, an investment so you know most ppm levels that come out uh will be in the 50 range and um you know we have lawyers looking at you know can you use your self-directed ira for this um a whole new asset class that's an ERISA law, so I, we have, uh, I have a lawyer checking into that as we speak, uh, whether that's even going to be available or it's just straight cash. Um, and the investment levels will be, you know, probably in the minimum of the six to eight thousand, or six to eight million, and some of them above ten. So there's there's no kind of current opportunity. But for those of you that are interested and are accredited, you know, in the chat line, you can put in your information, put your name in, and we can, you know, get you on a list. To, especially because all of you, you know, been in our community and known us for well, well over 30 days, and so there isn't one available, you know, from us at this moment. Okay. Are there any non-accredited investments? Um, I'm sure there are with other with other groups, um, and I think that the, the, for the non-accredited, I would look at, um, like Jen said, you know, how do you take your current skill set and move into like I, there's a, there was a woman that was going to come work actually with us at Live Out Loud and help us uh, out of Houston, and she took a marketing role, an online digital marketing role with a cannabis company. So I think that for some of you, there's some transitional things. I mean, wouldn't you kind of see some of that too, Jen? I know some of the real estate folks are moving that direction. Um, one of the 1031, you know, groups that are talking to us, they're not, they're not accredited. They just have an inheritance of a lot of real estate that's, that's moving, and they want to move to the purchase of uh, real estate or land that would be used for cannabis. So I think there are some, um, but those are um, since there's such a flood of that information, we could get that ready for next week's call because we're coming to the top of the hour. And exactly. I want to, I do want to, yeah, I want to go down to the slide to talk about what we are going to be doing in October. So in October, we're going to be doing a cannabis industry field trip. So we're just kind of again. We're putting the agenda together. So day one, um, start the you know cannabis education. Uh, possibly, we are going to look at uh, the the tour part of it. Um, so we're still putting those pieces together because obviously they're very sensitive. And there will be uh, VIP uh, purchase, you know, price prices and costs for that. That'll be up and above. Uh, the next morning, you'll be continuing in classroom. We have different lectures. We're going to do a whole variety from. The political side to the compliance side to you know i think all of that 
Um, we will be doing some social hours and VIP parties with different, you know, product consumption available. Um, right now, we're looking at um, private, re really private residents and mansions um, as our opportunity to do this. We're still in conversation. Yeah, um, we, the one thing we can tell you is we'll be in the Vegas area. Um, that's all we know at this moment because we're putting it together. And um, again, the the general admission um, special we've already uh, launched this when Jen was out at the table in. July, we already launched uh, a general admission special for $500. It's uh, October 19, 20, and 21, like Southern Vegas area. And if you want, you can go and you know you want to be a part of it. Um, and depending on where we end up in a, if we end up in a private residence, obviously the seating will be limited. So those of you that are on today, you can go to liveoutloud.com forward slash CB tour and uh, or call into our offices. The numbers are on the, on the slide as well. And Jen, what else would you want to add? You've been doing a lot of this. Um, you speak I would add that I would add that everybody on the phone that you uh, there's a misconception that you have to be a consumer of cannabis to be in this wonderful industry. You absolutely do not. I mean, of course, if you're going to be selling it, um, I would say that would probably be a good idea because you need to know what you're selling. But besides that, it's just like any other business. So. Um, don't be afraid. Uh, and when you see consumption, uh, you know, you don't have to consume at all to uh, find out some good information um, about this industry. But I always like to tell people that because I get that question all the time. And just think about it as Coors Brewery. I mean, does everybody drink alcohol? No. So same thing. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> but you still might want to go on the tour. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, everybody's got I mean, even if I didn't consume cannabis, I would want to see a cultivation. I mean, I can't when I got to see my first cultivation, I mean, my 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 mouth dropped. The only cultivation I've ever seen would be in magazine high time. So to see it in person and to really be up front and close in the dispensary and to see all the cool products that people have no idea. It's fascinating whether you whether you consume it or not. So those of you who know um, that you want to take advantage of it, again, we will let you know the location uh, specifically as we get that set up. Uh, but, you know, it's always those of you that want to you know, take action now and are first to sign up. We probably have well over 50 on, our, on the list uh, already. So we're going to continue to have our conversation and building this and growing. And um, again, I love co-creating these with you, so we can just sit back and make it all up and hope we, you know, land where you wanted to learn or just continue. And we won't shut the chat for a while. We are at the, uh, just past the top of the hour. So Jen and I are going to sign off. If there's anything else, Jen, you want to, you know, share, but we'll be back next week and the next actually three weeks. And uh, by the, you know, end of our four weeks, our goal is to be sold out on our Vegas tour in October, and you will have uh, all the details by then. So come live. If, um, again, we're not going to do replays. We want the very serious folks uh, that are part of the community to have first chance at all. So appreciate it, and uh, thanks to the Little Lab team for helping put all this together. Jen, anything you want to say to sign up? You know what? You'd be crazy not to at least dip your toe in the water. That's all. Exactly. Oh, crazy, yeah. crazy. And, and really, it's one of those things, we talk to people uh, on our floor, we talk to people daily that are so excited about this. So like Laurel said, we've got about 50 that have signed up so far. Uh, we know it's gonna end up, it's gonna be much higher. We expect it to be much higher, especially from these type of events that we're having right now, these webinars, it generates that that excitement. If you've got questions, you wanna talk to somebody, we've got these numbers that are listed, uh, the 888-565-1206. If you're international, you can call the 801. 252-4258. If you've just got questions that you want answered or want to discuss it with somebody, we've got people who can man the phones right now and answer those for you. So anyway, you want to end the call, Laurel? Yep, I think we are complete. Jen, appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, we will talk to all of you uh, one week from now, same time, and call into the office. We'll keep the chat line open because we want to keep hearing from you. Any thoughts you have, uh, keep it open for the next 10-15 uh, minutes. And then Brian will capture all those and we'll take that input and that'll help us uh, uh, design and create uh, the learning that you want as well. So thanks for being here today and uh, have a great day.
So I hope you enjoyed our webinar, our series on cannabis. It's an industry that is going to revolutionize and change the way we do a lot of business. The pharmaceuticals are going to get involved, the tobacco companies, the gaming companies. It is an industry to be reckoned with, and I hope you are, even if you don't invest, do the product, just watch an industry grow, watch and learn. It is a rare moment in our lifetimes that a new industry comes alive that is this prohibitionary and has such extreme uh, energy and conflict around it. So I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to continue to do tours. So check our website over at liveoutloud.com at all times. And uh, we will let you know where we are buying and where we will allow you to do some tours. And actually, if you're interested in the industry, let us know. Email our company at info, I-N-F-O, at liveoutloud.com. And uh, we would love to help you. And as always, with uh, our entire podcast, you go to asklaurel.com and uh, let us know what you need who you want connected with because we have an extraordinary database of access and we love helping people make money. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining Laurel for this segment of Real Money Talks, how to make money, manage money, and invest money. To continue this new conversation and to find free resources to support your wealth creation, visit asklaurel.com forward slash podcast gifts. That's A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L dot com forward slash podcast gifts. Thanks for listening and join us again soon. New episodes are released every week.